Hey, welcome back to Acting with Kira. Today we're going to talk about the uncomfortable choices that the actor has to make. Stay tuned to find out what they are. Hi, I'm Kira, and today we're going to delve into Declan Donnellan's theory of acting, and more specifically, the uncomfortable choices. Declan Donnellan is the co-founder of the international theatre company Cheek by Jowl. He also wrote the book The Actor and the Target, which is where he talks about the seven uncomfortable choices. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to give an extremely brief and simplified summary of the principles covered in this book. So the book is called The Actor and the Target. There is always a target, and the target is something that the actor must find. The target is always external. The target is something that your character can see and something that your character wants to affect. For example, if my character is extremely hungry but has no money, and opposite them can see a street seller selling bread, my target might be seeing a hostile street seller that I must slip past, or seeing a delicious loaf of bread that I need to devour, or if you want to up the stakes, seeing a delicious loaf of bread that will save my life. You can see already that these images conjure up lots of emotion and active drive towards something without having to internally concentrate and dig deep for these emotions. So what Declan Donnellan is saying is that by seeing and focusing on a target outside of yourself, you free yourself as the actor. Whereas trying to control everything and searching only within only serves to block you. Another key principle is that the target is always changing as the situation and people around you change. So going back to my earlier example, once you've devoured that lovely loaf of bread, your target is going to change. Okay, so that is my very brief synopsis of the target. Now let's look at those uncomfortable choices. These come in seven pairs and only one of each pair can exist at a time and it is up to the actor to make that choice. So the first uncomfortable choice is concentration or attention. Now which one of these two do you think he says we should keep and which one should we lose? Well, the answer is we should keep attention and lose concentration. Concentration is safe and it's about me. Concentration can be controlled. Concentration is looking at something and then digesting it internally. Attention is about other and cannot be controlled. It is seeing, and really seeing, what already exists. He gives an analogy of being hungry, but there is no food in the house. No matter how many times you go and search in that fridge, there will still be no food in the house. You must go outside to get your food. Concentration is like staying inside, constantly searching within to solve the problem. Whereas attention and seeing is the same as going outside. You are no longer in a controlled environment and it is only through this outside exploration that you are able to develop and progress your situation. He then says that we can switch on concentration because it can be controlled, whereas attention has to be given or found. Right, uncomfortable choice number two, faith or certainty. So which one do you think he will say this time? One is about having a leap of faith and the other one is about having more control over a situation. And the answer is we should keep faith. So it says that you must have faith over certainty and as an actor you cannot have certainty over anything. He gives an example of an actor waiting in the wings going over and over their lines even though they've put in the work to learn them. This act of going over and over them just before they're about to step on stage actually makes them seize up and forget their lines. The act of trying to be certain actually ended up hindering them. So an actor must have faith in the work that they have put in. Uncomfortable choice number three, freedom or independence. Now these might sound like they're quite similar, but he draws a clear distinction between the two. Which do you think he says we should keep? Well, he says we should keep Freedom. He says that independence comes from fear. 
fear of being let down by things that we have relied on. But we need the outside world to survive and we need the outside world for stimuli. Independence is an attempt to retain some semblance of control, whereas freedom is a mystery. Like attention in the first uncomfortable choice, it is given and therefore cannot be controlled. In the book it says, I don't make my freedom so I can't control it. The thing I make, I can control not to leave me. So I'll invent a synthetic freedom, call it independence and keep it on a lead. However, as independence is created in the mind, it doesn't really exist. It is an illusion of control which only serves to block the actor. Our fourth uncomfortable choice is to see or to show. So what do you think we should keep here? Should we be seeing things that evoke emotions within us? Or should we be showing emotions to the audience? Well, the answer here is to see. Sometimes actors feel like they need to show their emotions to make sure that the audience gets it. They feel like they have to do a little bit extra to make sure that the audience gets the storyline or gets the emotional arc. But this again means that the actor is focusing on themselves and trying to control the situation. I also feel that this mindset ties in with the actor worrying about how good a job they're doing and how good the audience think they are which again is a very me-focused mindset, just the actor worrying about themselves, the actor. Instead, the focus should be on seeing, seeing through the character's eyes, what they see around them and what drives them and what they want to affect. This is them seeking out the target. He says that seeing is about the target, showing is about me. He makes another great analogy here and likens showing to writing an essay about the character and says that showing is trying to control the perception of others. As we've seen from this choice and previous choices, control is not the goal here. Uncomfortable choice number five, creativity or curiosity. Now before you make your guess, think about which one of these two options is about looking outwards and which one is about having some control and a little bit about me. So the one we should keep here is curiosity. He likens creativity to concentration, which brings the focus back to yourself or to me. And he likens curiosity to attention with an outward focus towards the target. Everyone is creative, but it cannot really be controlled. However, you can choose what you see. Curiosity helps you to see. It keeps your interest outward. So be curious when you look at your scene partners and when you look at your surroundings. Really look at what is around you and how you might be able to affect it. He also notes here that creativity is not a cause. Creativity is a consequence. So following on from the other uncomfortable choices, he sticks with choosing something that takes the focus away from yourself and outwards to the world around you and more specifically to the target. So our penultimate choice, uncomfortable choice number six, is originality or uniqueness. Again these sound very similar but he draws a clear distinction between the two. Which one do you think we should keep? Which one do you think is a created form of control and which one do you think comes freely? He says we should keep uniqueness. Originality, like creativity, he says, is a symptom and not a cause. With both of them, we only think that we can control them. Originality comes from a fear of doing things the same way that people have done them before and wanting to do something new. But he points out that we are all intrinsically unique. So no matter how hard you try, you will always be doing something new and creating something unique. In fact, he says, trying to create an original piece of work will hinder you and block you, as you're only really worrying about how others perceive you. As we are all unique, we will all see through the character's eyes in a unique way, and therefore we will all see unique targets. He then goes on to say that by trying to create something original and new, you actually end up creating something rather dull and repetitive. Each time you do your role, it will be slightly different anyway. 
So in that, every time you do it, it will be new. And finally, the final uncomfortable choice, choice number seven, is excitement or life. So which of these two do you think he says we should keep? Again, it comes down to one being cultivated and created by us and one that we have naturally. So the answer is, keep life. So in this choice, he's specifically talking about that moment when you're rehearsing a piece and suddenly it starts to soar. There's an electricity and energy in the air and everyone is suddenly riveted in the room and can feel that energy. When you try and recreate this again the next day, that feeling isn't there, no matter how hard you try to recreate it. You try to manufacture this level of excitement, but it just doesn't land in the same way to bring everyone in. In order to try and recreate that moment, you might have manufactured excitement. He says that we manufacture excitement when we fear that the performance is dead. We try to use excitement to help us get that feeling over and over again. However, by having our focus on creating that elusive moment, you actually block yourself because you stop seeing the target. And it is only through seeing the target with an outward focus that you are able to really create those moments. These moments cannot be controlled. And by doing so, you end up actually creating a more generic performance. So we try to create this excitement due to a doubt within ourselves. And he states that seeing things in life is enough. The theme that runs through all of these choices is that one of the options is a manufactured form of the other one. The fact that it is manufactured gives the illusion of control. But it is this attempt of control that actually blocks the actor and can create feelings of being stuck. So that concludes the seven uncomfortable choices. Congratulations if you did get those right. Please pop in the comments how many you did get right and if any of those choices shocked you. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and learned a few things there and I hope it's given you food for thought on how to next approach your text. Um, as always, hit like if you liked the video and hit subscribe to see more videos like this one and as always thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.